Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. How y'all doing today? Good. After hearing the lady, she's the lady, man. She came over here all escorted by police, FBI, and everything, man. I'm over here like, who's over here? <laughs> no. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad to be on her team and not behind like their, their jails or anything like that. I'm, I'd rather be over here. Um, so with that said, we talking about community violence, right? Yeah. Is that what we're talking about today? Yeah. Okay. I could say that I've been affected by community violence and trauma. I got touched at the age of 17 by the, what I call the most horrible thing that you could experience in your life, which is getting touched by a hot iron. And that's what happened to me when, that's how I felt when I got shot by a bullet. And that wasn't my only first time like getting into that type of situation because throughout my whole life, I come from a country that has been violent for many years, which is Colombia, South America. Pablo Escobar, he, he destroyed my country in a, in a horrible way. And that was not the only country he destroyed. He also destroyed part of the United States also with all of that drug stuff that he was sending over here. And that messed up a lot of the communities over here in the 80s, if I'm not wrong. Am I right or am I wrong? Am I right? All right. So on behalf of the Colombian people, I would like to say we're sorry for doing that, really. Because it's not good to put bad things into a place where it's good because it's just going to destroy you, you know? And I've seen a lot of young people over here getting addicted to drugs at a young age. Over there in Colombia, we don't get addicted to drugs at a young age. We let other people, the adults, do it. But over here, when I came over here at 13 years old, I saw that, man. I saw young men and women using drugs, and I'm like, that's not good. So that made me feel bad about my own country because the stuff was coming from my country mostly, you know? But when my dad was bringing me over here, he brought me over here, I came on a plane, you know, felt good and everything. Trying to avoid the violence in Colombia that was going on in Colombia. But over here in the streets of Oakland, life is not, how do you say that word when you have something but it's not um, something that you could keep? Uh, it's not for sure. Your life is not for sure. You're not, you're not for sure gonna make, you, you don't know if you're gonna make it until you're an older person. So I was thinking on the plane, like, I'm going to live good. I'm going to go to a good school. I'm going to learn a lot. I'm going to meet new people, and I'm going to become a successful person. But all of that, all of that, what I thought it was going to be my reality, didn't, didn't went like that. My dad put me in the streets of Oakland. I mean, what can I do? My dad was a hardworking man, but he just didn't have the money to put me at a better place. What did I have to do? I had to survive. As soon as I get there, boom, there's a homicide on the corner. And I'm like, Dad, is this how it's gonna be? And he's like, this is what we gotta deal with. I'm like, I'm thinking I'm over here in America where everything is good and I'm, I don't have to see the stuff that I was seeing in Colombia like on a daily basis, you know? So my reality just, my dad was like, to son, I'm sorry, just deal with it. And I told him, I'm gonna have to, okay? Here I go, going to the school. Try, people trying to rob me for my shoes, man, or, or like if I'm wearing a nice shirt. Like, why do they have to do that if we are in America, a place where it's a place where everybody should live good, have a house, have a place for your children where you could go and play outside. But sometimes it don't happen. It don't happen in my community. I was just, talk, I just speak, speaking to some people in my community and they always say, like, man, you know we don't let our children play outside. I'm like, why not? This is America, man. And then, and then I realized, I'm like, man, but I got shot too. I got put in this wheelchair because I got hit by a bullet. I got touched by real violence, man. And after that, instead of, like the lady said, you could choose going to the light or you could choose going into the darkness. And I chose going into the darkness. And it's not good, because after I got shot, I didn't know what was going on in my mind. All I, all I heard was, like, you traumatized, or you're, 
you're living through your pain right now that you don't have your legs. It's like, yeah, I wanna, I wanna commit suicide. I don't wanna live like this, man. All I wanna do is, I don't know, start a new life, but you know, I decided to start game banging and it wasn't good. It was not good. I saw many of my friends getting killed. I saw many of my, my friend's mother crying. At one point, I said that I, I wasn't gonna let my mother go through the same stuff. And my mom was back there in Colombia when she found out that I got shot and I couldn't use my legs anymore. She was crying. I don't know how she felt. I spoke to her on the phone and I asked her, Mom, how did you really feel? It's like, I felt like I wanted, like I didn't know what to do, son. I, like, I was living the pain that you was going through. I'm like, man. But I was praying for you. So I, I thank my mom a lot for praying for me the times when I was in the hospital. Um, what else can I say about this violent stuff? I could say that uh, I was able to turn my life around. I could say that. I could say that uh, being an immigrant, um, I'm working with immigrant children now, but I'm not trying to let them fall through the bad things that I went through in my life. I'm trying to teach them that there is a better way here in America. I'm trying to teach them, you know, don't, just because of the stuff that you had lived in your country, don't think that you could live like in a very different way over here. I'm telling them, you know, go to university, go to a college, try, try to stay off the street. That's, what, that's, all I'm, that's all I'm telling them. And then I could have chose not to do that, but I'm somebody that want to be in the right team, not in the, not in the wrong team, man, for real. You see this color? I feel like everybody in this world is one color. It's not Caucasian, it's not, it's not white, it's not Russian, it's not uh, Brazilian. Here I am working with some of my youth. They just graduated like a couple of weeks ago. And I mentored them throughout the year and only one fell through the cracks. Out of my group that I work with, uh, Black males in uh, Richmond, California, only one fell through the cracks. But it was because he had a lot of bad situation going on in his life that it was just, I just couldn't, couldn't help him out. But I tried my hardest and I, I could tell that he, was, he came with me like one month before the school was over, he was out of the school. But during the whole school year, I tried to keep him in track, you know? So here they, here, here's some of them. They, they graduated like a couple of weeks ago. I feel very proud of that because me being Latino, helping other, other races, man, I feel, I feel good. And I'm just showing y'all right here some of the stuff that I do. But here we go again. Here I am with, um, this is called the, Peace, the Youth Peace Academy. I did, uh, I did this program um, two weeks before coming over here. So I basically did my summer little program, and this is for the kids that are gonna be just in the streets because they don't have nothing to do. The school is over, what are they gonna do? Nothing, just get into bad situations in the street. So here I am trying to help them out. I never been to the Academy, Academy of Sciences in my life, but I went, uh, I went a couple of days ago and it was nice. I seen an albino crocodile, and I never seen that in my life. Eh? What else is in here? I never seen a, a white crocodile. I'm like, whoa! What is this? <laughs> yeah, and here they are graduating on um, Friday. I was took this picture on Friday, and uh, so what I trying to do with my kids, you know, empower them, I'm trying to tell them, stay out the street. Look at this. It's not good living like this. I'd rather have you doing different activities like my friend Johnny, he does the dancing. I learned that when your mind is busy dancing, you forget about the problem. You really do. And I have learned that and then 
my friend Johnny has been, been uh, my, my right hand working with me and these kids, and you're going to see them at the workshop that we're going to have tomorrow, we're gonna, how we have these masses of youth coming together. Not only, from, uh, not only when we have events, we have them from Oakland, but we have them from all over the United States. We have people from Washington. We have kids from uh, Phoenix. We have people from all over the Bay Area in Oakland, California. So everybody just comes together. And I'd rather have them right there doing something positive than out there in the streets getting hurt, getting shot, getting killed, ending up in jail, man, straight up. What else do we have right here? Oh, yeah, and I would like to thank the people that, um, the people that has opened the doors for me, man, like the NCTSN, I would like to thank Catholic Charities of the East Bay because they were the ones that when I needed a place that I, like that balloon just popped earlier, that's how I felt, that's how I really felt. And then I was like, what should I do? Should I go and pick up my gun again and go and do some dirt on the street? Go and rob some people because I don't have no money? And I had goons with me that would do that stuff for me so I didn't have to be on my wheelchair, but I would be driving or doing something crazy, you know? But I had people doing that bad stuff for me. And who was these people? Little 12, 13 years old, you know? So that was really bad, and I, and I don't like that. Now that I think about that, that's very horrible, making children do that stuff. I'd rather have them do positive stuff. So I would like to thank the NCTSN. I would like to thank you guys right here at the Fifth National Youth Prevention Violence Program. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For helping me out all of these years that I, I've, been, I've been able to turn my life around. Um, I, uh, I decided to quit at 22 years old. Now I'm 27 years old and I'm still going and I'll be in this world doing this work until the God, the Lord calls me back over there. So thank you.